This is probably one of my favorite and most eventful weeks of the year. Let's talk. What up viewers, what up, what up, Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, December 8th, and I meet this time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. First thing we gotta talk about is last night's Game Awards. Um, I am a big fan, I didn't go in person this year, um, but I did watch it on the couch, all four and a half hours of it, so you don't have to. Um, yeah, and besides being very star-studded, they got a lot of Hollywood actors, at least young ones this time, not, you know, rolling 80-year-old Al Pacino out, out on stage, but uh, Timothy Chalamet, Simi Limu, Anthony Mackie. Um, oh, gosh, probably missing a half dozen more. So uh, I don't know if this is more of a, like, trying to validate games by bringing in actors, like Hollywood actors, or vice versa. Um, they even got the guy from um, Raised by Wolves, um, Assassin's Creed Bayek. I, for, I forget one of the Assassin's Creed characters. Uh, but he came in and gave a pretty heartfelt speech about starting up his own game studio. I'm wondering if maybe actors, while they couldn't act, just like started getting involved in games. Maybe that was uh, maybe that's kind of what's happening. But yes, it was very star studded. Um, besides celebrating a few games and announcing a lot of games, uh, there was just a lot of actors on stage. Uh, you know, Chris Chris Judge came out for the uh, <laughs> and didn't give an eight minute speech this time. Kratos didn't come out and give an eight minute speech this time. So. Uh, we got a little bit of that time back, but uh, yeah, they kind of they kind of kept it zipping along for the awards portion of it, you know, where people were only allowed to give like thirty second uh, thank you speeches, which is always good. But uh, and and played for laughs uh, during Chris Judge talking, so that was kind of fun. But um, first off, uh, I agree with all. I pretty much agree with all of the games, the awards given out. Um, I had Baldur's Gate for Game of the Year. I've been saying that for a couple months now, and I definitely think it deserved it. It also won five other awards, basically anything it was nominated for, including um, Neil Nabon uh, getting it, uh, getting Best Actor uh, or Best Performance in uh, in a video game, uh, and that was uh, that was awesome. Uh, Asterians, maybe not my like favorite character from the game, but definitely probably one of the better stories in the game. I'll give him that. So uh, glad he got it. Um, and definitely beat out a lot of the competition. Uh, the runner-up for the Game Awards was Alan Wake, which uh, got uh, three different awards, including having an awesome performance. Uh, I would include this as an award, but awesome for live stage performance, uh, including Sam Lake out there dancing at the end uh, and having all the actors and performing one of the songs from Alan Wake 2, um, which, if you haven't gotten that far in Alan Wake, is is quite a mind bend how they kind of fit that into the game so uh loved seeing the uh, old gods of asgard playing on stage um my regrets for choices i i play a game every year where i select my choices and play against other people um and i regret somehow i thought that spider-man would beat out breath of the wild for action adventure but uh that i don't know what i was thinking at the time i did that because obviously breath of the wild deserved its one reward and uh, it seems like uh, Spider-Man was going to get blown out of the water. Um, a, a lot of sequelitis going along, going away, uh, going along the way in this. Um, I also regret not selecting The Last of Us as the uh, best, um, the best adaptation. Uh, I I went with Mario, but I could see what they're going for. Like The Last of Us is a like shot for shot remake of of uh the last of us video game as opposed to mario being kind of a little bit more like poetic license with what's going on um but i also i also just thought that like mario made a billion dollars so i thought it would definitely win like the popular vote having see, seeing as everybody on the world probably basically saw it so um but otherwise yeah i agree with everything um and uh yeah i really enjoyed the awards portion i'm a big award show fan and so just seeing the, the giving games their due their due time um, was cool, and I agreed with most of them. And Baldur's Gate swept it uh, as I would have expected. The second part of the Game Awards, and basically comprising most of the Game Awards, is actually just uh, as Kotaku put it, E3 in uh, winter. So yeah, there was a lot of games announced. I have fifty games lit, like written on my list, most of which you probably don't need to worry about. 
Um, but in order, uh, in no particular order, other than these are the order that I got them, uh, that we got them in, um, there was a lot of games that caught my eye. I'm going to run through, you know, the 10 or so that I want to highlight, um, but there's definitely more, so you should check that all that out. I'll have links down below in the description to check that out. Um, Brother, a tale, a tale of Two Souls was being remade. Um, but I think that was in 2025. A lot of the Game Awards announcements were all for 2025. Um, besides the ones that were coming out, surprise launching like the day of or, you know, a week later in, in December, still in December. So uh, we did fill out a little bit of our Q1 next year, but for the most part, it was either games coming out right now or games coming out in 2025. So uh, looking forward to all the games that uh, we'll be playing a year and a half from now. Uh, another cool one was uh, Harmonium the Musical, which was actually, uh, I think it's like a deaf musical. So that like a lot of the characters are signing their way through the musical. Um, and I always like, I love musicals. And so playing through one would be pretty fun. I think Stray Gods actually deserved some uh, some recognition at the Game Awards. Unfortunately, didn't get any of that, but uh, uh, yeah, really love the musical, and so looking forward to that. Uh, God of War got a new DLC coming out in the next week. Uh, God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. Um, so all the Nordic keywords that you could possibly want. Um, and yeah, a new DLC. You know, might actually that might actually be the catalyst for bringing me back in so that I can finish the game and then play through whatever the DLC is. Um, in, in very much enjoyed seeing more Hellblade 2. I've been waiting for this. It's been on my list of most anticipated for quite some time. Um, so hopefully we get it. It's just at 2024 at the end. So well, we at least know we're getting it next year. Um, but I hope it's sooner. Like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I hope it's sooner like summertime and not uh, fall to winter time. Although I kind of expect it to come out in August like uh, the first one did. So just because I think... Often that's the case that, uh, you know, similar release dates for for games in the franchise. Uh, another one that caught my eye was Casting of Frank Stone. A, I love the like sequence of words titles like uh, What Remains of Edith Fitch and uh, something something Ethan Carter. Um, just kind of like that, like format for name. And that one kind of fits into that same uh, bucket. It's a collaboration between Supermassive and Behavior. Uh, super massive of Until Dawn and the Dark Picture Anthologies fame and behavior known for developing uh, Dead by Daylight. And so this is going to be a single player horror game uh, and those two development teams making a single game, a uh, single player game. I'm like definitely looking forward to it. Speaking of horror games, uh, it looked like there was a multiplayer Outlast game. So for people who like the first person horror genre, uh, so now you can be able to play through it. It looked like it was multiplayer. Um, and that's coming out in Q1 or next year. It's coming out March 5th of, uh, 2024. So, uh, yeah, looking to get scared with my friends, uh, coming this March, uh, always Kojima's doing something weird. And so they, he finally talked about his partnership with Microsoft, uh, which he teased like a year ago, uh, the game or the horror experience is called OD. Um, and it's got, uh, Jordan Peele of, uh, get out fame working together with him on this kind of experience. There was a lot of actors, <laughs> a lot of name recognition uh, around the game as well, uh, as uh, like Sophie Lillis is in the game. Um, and so, yeah, but he called it a horror experience. So it's like part movie and part video game, which is kind of what Kojima is known for, uh, considering the like 20 minute opening for uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Arcane talked about their next game and surprisingly it's about it's vampires but it is not Redfall uh, this one a very famous vampire is Marvel's Blade uh, and the it actually had the head producer coming out in uh, in a trench coat with the creative director um, and uh, yeah I'm uh, Blade's one of my favorite Marvel characters so uh, and I love everything vampires so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what that is all about um, next up, we had a Space Marine 2 uh, date reveal. Uh, we haven't heard from Space Marine in quite some time. We knew it was getting pushed. I think it was originally intended for 2023. And then when it said when they said it got pushed to 2024, we didn't have we were kind of left in limbo. Now we know that it's coming out September 9th. Uh, so looking forward to playing through Space Marine 2, potentially with a squad of friends uh, in September. And last but not least, the big buzzer beater at the end uh, was a new Monster Hunter game. 
Uh, this one looks like a sequel to kind of Monster Hunter Worlds called Monster Hunter Wilds. Uh, and it definitely looked like the open world kind of sprawling Monster Hunter that uh, got me into the Monster Hunter genre, much like Monster Hunter Worlds. So looking forward to that. Uh, there was like 50 games at the Game Awards announced. Uh, so if you thought I forgot any or there's some that I should keep my eye on, feel free to leave a comment down below. Moving right along, as promised this week, we got the trailer for GTA 6. It uh, leaked originally, but then the full trailer was released, um, and we know a little bit more about the game now. Um, it is a return to Vice City, uh, so we're going to Miami, Florida. Um, we got a little bit about who the main character is. I believe her name is Lucia. Uh, she's an ex-con, um, and she has a, a boyfriend that she's like reconnecting with and potentially is playable. At least that's what I saw in the rumor mill. Um, and a lot of Florida man memes. There was just all, all the social media stuff. There'll be influencers to kind of keep it grounded. And, and unfortunately it rat, you know, grounded in what's real in our world. Uh, but all the Florida memes were just kind of really hilarious in the, um, in the, uh, trailer. So feel free to check that out. I'll have a link down below in the description. Moving right along. We actually have video games launching some of the last video games launching of the year. Uh, one of which is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Uh, this is Far Cry with an Avatar skin, a James Cameron skin, um, and it's out. It's made by Ubisoft, um, and it's currently at a 73 Metacritic. Um, I didn't look at what the good and bads were, but from what I read, it's just it isn't up to like the Far Cry standard. So if you're looking for, I mean, not that the Far Cry standard after six is a very high bar, um, but yeah, I uh, you know, it's a uh, 73 is a is a little bit spotty i mean it's at least better than you know the most recent call of duty campaign but uh um yeah it's it's probably a mixed bag i'm i might buy into it i remember there being a discount last week so i might still see if i can get a little bit of that discount before i jump in and play um but i'm a fan of the avatar universe and running around and playing with it uh it seems like a fun game so and i like i like far cry or at least i got on board with far cry uh in the last uh couple years so uh playing through a far try a far cry like game with an avatar skin it you know i say it derogatorily but uh i think it i don't mean it as harsh as that might sound i actually think that's uh, a cool combination so i'm looking forward to potentially playing that sometime soon um it's been a while since we talked about the day before but the game is finally here this is the once top of the steam wish list uh but after a slew of controversy and plagiarism accusations uh it is now launched into early access um and after all the promises of having an open world zombie mmo uh we only get one of those things and it's not open world or an mmo uh so it just is, has zombies in it um yeah it's it's kind of fallen flat out flat on its face outside of the gate out of the gate so uh uh unfortunately probably an, a, a skip skip for a lot of people but uh it was once very highly recognized and people were very interested in playing like the division or division two but with zombies and playing with you know with all your friends uh, and kind of like an mmo setting so but it doesn't seem like any of that is there so i'm very curious what is what is there left of the game? I, I, I got to watch some game, gameplay videos, but uh, that'll probably be enough for me. I won't be hopping on the bandwagon. <clears throat> Alone in the Dark uh, has been slowly pushing their dates uh, back. They pushed it out of this year to or out of Q4 to, to avoid some of the big launches. I think it was originally planned to be launched on like, I don't know, Marvel uh, on like Spider-Man's launch day or I don't remember if it was Call of Duty or something like that. So they... They push it out uh, to like December, then they push it out to to uh, or no, they push it out to January, and now they push it out another few months. Uh, they've now pushed it to March twentieth of twenty twenty four, uh, citing the they don't want to be crunching during the holidays, which is a, a good, uh, which is good, you know, um, it's a good sentiment. Uh, but you know, eventually the game does have to come out. But uh, you know, excited to see that they can take their time. Uh, they don't have to force their developers to crunch, especially during the holidays. So, uh, you know, uh, the game will eventually come out, and I am looking forward to it, uh, playing through the game that has David Harbour and jo Jody Comer. But uh, um, but I'll have to wait a few more months, and thankfully, or ho hopefully, no one has to crunch this holiday at the developers of Alone in the Dark. 
the cowards at Nintendo are leaving it up to us to determine whether or not uh, the relationship status between uh, Zelda and Link. Uh, the producers came out in this week saying, yep, they're leaving it up to the fans to determine what the relationship status is. Uh, and I don't want to hear from any of you Marin stands from Link's Awakening, uh, but uh, I am a full-fledged supporter of the legend of the Zelda and Link relationship that uh, seems very hinted at uh, from what I've played. I haven't finished Breath uh, Tears of the Kingdom, but uh, very much hinted at. So, uh, uh, but the producers and the cowards at Nintendo won't uh, won't give us the satisfaction and tell us that they're in a relationship. Moving right along. Um, Cosair, uh, the gaming company, I think I actually have, uh, Cosair RAM in my PC now, uh, but they are, they built a gaming desk, uh, and I usually don't care about, you know, kind of some of these peripheral manufacturers making desks. I do like Razer products a lot, um, but, uh, Cosair made a gaming desk and this one really caught my eye, um, partially because of the price point. Uh, I know gaming desks are expensive. Uh, the base desk is 1350. Um, and then there's like a, a 250 and then this is what, this is what really caught my eye. There's a, um, they have like a pegboard behind it. Kind of like you'd have on like a workbench, um, where they even showed off like having a controller and a, a keyboard. Uh, but the cool thing I liked was the built into that, like pegboard and this backdrop for your desk was, uh, two monitor mounts just built into the desk, which is awesome. Cause uh, most of the time you have to buy something and, and it's a, big concern of whether or not it's going to fit or not. And does your, does your, uh, does your monitor even have supports for, um, for the back plating, which I might still be a concern, but, um, but yeah, just having the two set up, like the two windowed set up built into your desk was, was very cool. I didn't see whether or not it was a standing desk or not. Definitely something you would ask about, uh, before buying, but before dropping 16, $1,700 on a desk. Um, but caught my eye, looked cool. I'll have a link down below for you to check it out. Another game launched this week, and now that Larian's are all, you know, gotten all the awards, it's time for them to move out of the way for my second favorite CRPG, uh, computer RPG developer, Owlcat, who actually launched a game this week. Uh, I've been talking about it for a while, Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, um, made by Owlcat. Owlcat has made the last two Pathfinder games, so they've been, uh, bringing kind of my favorite RPG setting into uh, the digital space for a while now. I even backed the first two games. Um, <clears throat> but now this one wasn't even kickstarted, so I couldn't even back it. Uh, I just have to play it at launch. Uh, but this one's set in the 40K universe. Uh, you're collecting a misfit band of humans and, and all different races from across the 40K universe to help you uh, just kind of uh, develop a ragtag group uh, team to defeat the woes of the outer reaches of the War Warhammer 40K universe. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, um, it's got an 80 Metacritic, so it's reviewing pretty well. Um, but it, you know, having another compute, uh, a computer RPG so close to Baldur's Gate three, which just won a bunch of awards. Uh, I'm curious how it'll, how do it'll kind of feel as compared to Baldur's Gate three. And, but I won't, hopefully I don't shade my opinion of it too much by how awesome Baldur's Gate three is. Um, but I am looking forward to uh, playing Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader sometime soon. Let me know if you pick it up down below in the comments. <clears throat> then we got two more shows. Uh, there was a lot of shows talked about at the Game Awards, but these two uh, weren't really bought up that much. Uh, the first of which, Halo Season 2, is coming next year. Uh, early next year. It's actually coming in February, uh, February 8th to be exact. Um, and this one via the trailer looks a little bit more action-packed. Uh, I haven't watched all of season one, but I remember it being a little bit boring, a little bit more about this mystery and this alien crystal and all this kind of stuff, which is part of the Halo franchise. But uh, people, you know, when you make a live action Halo, people just want to see people, you know, shooting stuff and blowing up. Uh, it's a little bit uh, baser, a little bit more lizard brain uh, entertainment. So uh, but I am looking forward to <coughs> season two of Halo. I uh, just got to get through season one first. And last but not least, you knew we wouldn't get out of this week without talking about the Fallout trailer. came out last Saturday or so, I think was when it started uh, catching fire. Um, you know, it didn't come out on Friday because I would have talked about it if it had. So, uh, But very early last week. Um, yeah, the Fallout, two, the Fallout trailer looks awesome. Uh, I was a little concerned after like the first minute or so. I thought, the, I thought it was taking itself too seriously. Uh, and Fallout always has a really zany edge to it. 
Um, so <coughs> I'm excited that uh, by the time I got to the end of the trailer and I saw a vault dweller with a fork in her eye, like spraying bullets, I was like, okay, maybe this game isn't, or maybe this uh, show isn't taking itself too seriously. It'll definitely have horror and creepy, like Fallout has definitely got a lot of, a mixed bag of genres in there. Um, but, uh, you know, the heartfelt story of Walter Goggins and, and how he turns into the ghoul, like I'm very, I'm all in for that stuff. Um, but yeah, I just didn't want it to be like too self-serious. I don't think I don't think The Last of Us vibe really fits like a Fallout TV show. So hopefully that's not what they're going for. Or even like Westworld. This is made by the the create Jonathan Nolan, the creator of Westworld. Like Westworld is very self-serious and like you know it's got its little it's got its it's got its moments of levity, but like it's very dramatic. And I I don't want that in my Fallout series. Uh, I want there to be a little bit more zany and a little bit more edge. And I just want an awesome soundtrack. That's actually what I really want. Um, but let me know what you think of the Fallout trailer down below. I'm looking forward to watching that next April. <clears throat> That's it for this week. Let me know if you feel like I forgot anything down below in the comments, but there was a lot to cover. So uh, if I did forget anything, I, this is like, I don't, I don't think you could pick, I mean, besides the Nintendo thing, like there's like pick 10 different stories that came out this week that were better than, than what I'm talking about here. Um, anyway, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, please follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch so you can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend. And I hope you have a super day. Bye.